you know, I know people don't want to hear about my illness. I understand that. But you know, when I was a young man, I could get a cold and, you know, six, seven days, go on and push that thing off, and it's gone. The older I get, the more things just linger. Yeah. They, just don't, they just don't go away like they do. I am, my head has just been so stopped up for the last several days, and I thought, it's not kind of floating. Um, my voice is not what it ought to be, and you know, it's just a cold or something, you know, just kind of hanging around. So anyway, I didn't say that for sympathy. I just pray for me that the Lord will bless his service this morning, and I'll be able to use my voice for his glory. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject of tears. Now, tears is kind of in line with our Memorial Day because... <coughs> No one has ever laid a loved one in the ground without shedding tears. We're all common. There's not a single person in this building this morning that doesn't know how to cry. Now, I understand sometimes men get real macho. In the middle. We don't want other people to see us cry. But I promise you, brothers and sisters, tears is one of the greatest stress you will ever display. Amen. It is one of the, it's not a strength, but it's the display of strength. And you will learn to shed some tears, even in the presence of your loved ones. You will find yourself stronger, and you will find that they will look upon you as being stronger. Stand with me to read just one little verse, verse 4. Revelation 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now that's the text this morning. You can go on and you can see the rest of what it says. No death, no sorrow, no crying, no pain. The former things are passed away. The former things are the things of this earth, the things that we live through right now. They're not former right now. We're dealing with them day in and day out. But the Bible specifically says God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, I will tell you this. This is why I believe and I understand what modern philosophy or ways of thinking are. That our loved ones, you know, so I know, you know, we won this championship, and I know my daddy's up in heaven watching down. I hate to bust your theological bubble, but I do not believe that the people in heaven are watching this arena, okay? Why do you say that, preacher? Because think of the sorrow that they would have if they looked down here and saw the struggles and the heartaches that we go through. So I do believe, brothers and sisters, that is blocked from their eyes. Okay, they're watching what goes on earth. Now, there'll be a reunion one day and we'll all share the things that we've gone through. But don't believe, friends, I do not believe that there's a great arena just kind of watching the struggles that we go through on this earth. I don't believe that. Lord, I ask that you bless the preaching or any of your word. Be glorified in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Now, it's bad to always be morning. We mourn, we cry over everything. We cry about the past. Oh, if I could have just done this a little bit different. If I could have made this decision, or if I hadn't made that decision, things would be better. And so we cry. Then we cry over the things in the present. Oh, I wish my situation was just a little bit better. And we think, friend, that maybe the tears are going to wash the situation or the decisions away that we've made. And then we cry over the future. And we don't know what the future is. And the Bible specifically tells us that we should not mourn over our future. We know that God is in control and He holds our lives and our future in His hands. But nonetheless, we learn for some reason or another that we must shed tears over our future. Uh, when we go to the grave is when we do a lot of crying. But somehow, other friends, as God's people, we must always understand at the grave, the Lord specifically said in His Word, the sting has been taken out of the grave. The, the stinger, you know, if you take a stinger out of a wasp or a hornet, he's useless. I mean, he can buzz and he can look mean, but his, his ability to do any harm is gone. And that's what the Bible says. Death looks grievous. Death looks horrible. But his ability to do harm to the people of God is all gone away. So I'm going to look this morning at three particular points. I want to talk about the causes for tears that we cry, the true tears that we cry, and the meaning of the text that we just read. First of all, let's look at some of the causes for tears. Grief is one. I was on the phone just a couple of days ago with someone whose family member is going through a hard time because 
of cancer. And uh, in the conversation, I could just hear the, the voice break and said, you know, preacher, it's tough. It's tough. And there came the tears. Well, brothers and sisters, those tears come. Yes, grief brings those. And it's common to all. The Bible says the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. That means, friend, just because you're a child of God, you are, are not exempt from crying and shedding tears in this world. You see, everybody's body is subject to disease because of the fall. We were born from the moment, friends, we breathe our first breath, we begin to die. And we're going as fast as we can toward death, and our body is subject and frail to everything in the elements or whatever it might be that causes our body to decay. But from that moment on, we begin to perish. And many saints suffer. Don't you ever get to the place in your life. I'm not against divine healing today. I believe that God heals. But I am against divine healers. And I really get upset when people tell folks, well, if you have faith, God would deliver you of this illness that you have. That's, sad. That's just not scriptural. Because the Bible says the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. All they do is cause more suffering in the hearts and lives of people. When they are uh, 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 mentally, because they say that they uh, are suffering, if, uh, if they wouldn't suffer, if they didn't have faith. Secondly, the rod of God causes tears. Now we understand what the rod of God is. We read the twenty-third psalm. We see what the shepherd and, and the sheep that he's watching over, and we read that verse: "Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me." Now, brothers and sisters, we all love that little staff. Isn't it wonderful when the pastor's got that little staff and he, and he goes over there and says, All right, little sheep, come on back. You hook them around and they come on back in. And that little sheep, ah, come back in. But what happens if that sheep don't want to come back in? Friends, then the rod comes out. Then the rod comes out. And the rod is used, friends, simply to teach that sheep a lesson. It will break one of those sheep's legs. And you know what? That sheep always remembers then. He accompanies the voice and the prodding of the shepherd. Come on back. Okay, I'm only one broke leg. Now I'll get back in the fold. Well, friend, let me tell you something. The Bible says if God doesn't love us, if we're not his children, we are not his children. Or, or he doesn't chastise us if we're not his children. We are bastards. That's what the scripture says. Illegitimate children. But once we're his child, friends, the rod comes into our lives and he disciplines us, brothers and sisters. You see, I'm just like you. I've been through school and I've taken all kinds of tests for this and that and the other. And you know what I remember most? The points I got wrong. Not whatever I got right, but I remember what I missed. And that's the way it is with God. He trains us to the place and when He disciplines us for something in our lives, we never ever forget what the discipline was for. So that causes grief and pain. Then there's the crosses of every day. Who in the world can go from January to December without having weariness in their life? Who can go into their home and find that there's no troubles there? Who cannot find a sick child that you sit up with every night and, and, and saw them having pain? And, and all this pain causes tears. Crying, crying, crying over the situation, friends, in their lives. Just day in and day out routines. If you've never been there, friends, you must be from another planet. No ship can sail the Atlantic without meeting storms, and no one can live without facing sorrow. And this sorrow brings tears to our lives. Then there's death. The Bible says that even Jesus wept at death. If you could think about it, and I understand that people who study this kind of stuff say that the most read part of the newspaper is the obituary. And you know, when I get older, you know, I get the newspaper, I'm just like you. I say, well, I want to find out who's dead. You know, any of my friends' party, you would think maybe the sports or the comics. No, the most read part of the newspaper is the obituary. And you've seen the pages, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one. But it lists people who have died. And think about this now. Every one of those people who have perished has caused tears in somebody's life. They're crying because their loved one has died. Then there's disappointments. When Judas betrayed Jesus, don't you think that made him cry? Have you ever been betrayed by a friend? Someone who, who you thought you could trust, they turned their back upon you? Yeah. And you know what? It causes us to cry. It causes the tears in our lives. 
Then sin itself brings tears to our eyes. Understand something this morning. Sin brings more sorrow than all the other problems combined. If we'd only listen. How many times have we heard, oh, if I just listened to my mom. If I'd have just listened to what my dad told me, I wouldn't be in this situation. This past week, I stood in the courtroom where a sentence was given to a young man. And when the sentence came down, there were tears. There were tears by the prisoner, and there was tears by his family. Friends, sin brought those tears. Then there's wounded pride that brings tears to ours sometimes. You ever heard anybody say, well, you know, I'm glad I don't make mistakes. Anybody ever said that to you? Well, I'm glad I don't ever mess up. Well, I got news for you, friends. You're not beyond making mistakes. You're not beyond messing up. You're not beyond disappointing that woman or man that you live with. And you know what you're supposed to do, brothers and sisters, when you make mistakes? You're supposed to go to them and you're supposed to say, listen, honey, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I messed up. I'm sorry for what I've done. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, that wounded pride that we have causes tears in our lives. When we approach God the same way, He said, oh God, Lord, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. Now, I, I, I'm like you. I'd rather confess to God than to people. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, that's what's needed in, in homes. We need to go to each other. I'd rather rational bear sometimes than to go to anybody. Anybody in the church or anybody at the home said, listen, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I humbly apologize. But if you would learn to do that, you could save yourselves a lot of pain and a lot of tears. I remember the story that Jesus told about the Pharisee and the publican. Now, the Pharisee didn't have any tears in his eyes. He just came down and stood in the front of the church with all his flaring robes and and prayed about how good he was and all this. No tears. But the Bible says that, Jesus, uh, that the publican sat on the back row. And he cried. He cried. His head was bowed down. And he smoked his breast and said, Lord, I am a sinner. And he's the one, friends, that ended up being justified. Amen. And think about the, the tears of unbelief. You ever doubted God? You ever doubted God? Sometimes we get to our lives and we doubt God. Well, what if God doesn't do this? Well, friends, you can be rest assured that God never, ever doesn't keep his word. He always will. But sometimes we'll, we'll get overwhelmed with things that I'm not sure that God is going to do what he said in this particular situation. And it causes tears. Well, the next thing I want to talk to you about is true tears. Now, we mentioned the tears of Jesus. So let's elaborate on that a little bit. There are three places in the Bible that... The, that God's word says that Jesus cried. He cried in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, we wouldn't know that except it's listed over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says he actually cried tears as he knelt there and prayed about the burden that he was about to bear. Now, here's what I believe, friends. There are three things that caused Jesus to cry, and there's three things that caused us to cry. And there's also three things that we should pray about concerning these issues. First of all, he prayed in the garden because he knew about the situation that he was about to go through. It's all right to pray and cry over your own burdens. Nothing wrong with that. And then we prayed over Lazarus. He went to the tomb and there his Bible says he, he wept because he was about to call Lazarus back from the dead or he knew what was going to happen. When he heard the news that Lazarus had died, he wept. Why was that? Because that was the connection that he had crying for other people. Those are the second set of tears that we should cry. The true tears now. We cry over our own problems. We cry over those friends around us who need healing. Now somebody said one time that the reason he cried over Lazarus is because he was going to have to call him back from heaven, back to this world of sin. And then the third time that Jesus cried was when he cried over Israel. He looked over there and he saw Israel and said, Oh, I wish, I'd, I wish you'd listen to me. I'd have gathered you like a hen gathers her, chick, or her chicks chicks under her wings, but you wouldn't listen. And the Bible says that Jesus cried. So he cried for his own needs. He cried for his brother's needs, and he cried for the nation of Israel. And then secondly, there's prayers, there's tears of repentance. How many of you ever cried over sin? I'm not talking about joking over sin. We do plenty about it. But the Bible says that tears should be a part of our repentance. Let me give you two illustrations. A man by the name of Peter went out and denied his Lord. What does the Bible say when he 
denied Jesus? He cried. He cried. He wept bitterly over his sins, of the sin to deny. You see, he made eye contact with Jesus that night. He understood the sin that he got. Well, think about this, brothers and sisters. There's somebody looking over your shoulder, everything you say and everything you do. And when you displease the Lord, he's displeased, and you should get on your knees and you should cry out to God for cleansing. You see, tears of repentance is important in the walk of a child of God. Then there's the prodigal son. Now we're told, brothers and sisters, when the son rose from the pig pen and went to his father's house, they both had a crying time. Tears of joy from the father, tears of repentance from the son. That's the kind of relationship we have with the father. That friends, when we sin and we're overwhelmed by sin and we understand that God has revealed these sins to us, we must get on our face before God and we must repent and shed tears of repentance over these sins. Those are things, friends, that must happen in our lives. A gentleman by the name of Roland Hill said, Repentance was such a sweet companion that the only regret he could have is learning, uh, having is leaving the tears of repentance behind because they were so sweet. That's the kind of relationship we have with God. That you actually, when you disappoint the Lord, you actually cry. Lord, I get on my face and I cry because of the sins in my life. Then there's injured honor. Have you ever slandered Jesus? Oh, friend, when we have an opportunity to witness for the Lord and we don't use it, we're slandering Jesus. We take the low road rather than the high road. Spurgeon said this, if I could win crowns, I will at least give tears. If I cannot make men love him, at least I will weep in secret when they deny him. Friends, never deny your Lord. But when you do, when you have an opportunity to witness and you don't do it, that's denying Jesus when you do. Get on your face. Nobody has to see it. But get in your closet and weep your heart out over your sins. If you do this, I promise two things. First of all, you will have an emotional, healthy life. And secondly, you will have a walk and an intimacy with God like you've never known before. If you can just get to the place, friends, where tears become part of of your ministry. Amen. I was talking with a young man a few years back and he was <laughs> upset because every time he got up, he seemed to just cry. I told him, well, let me tell you something. I would rather have the tears and have the heart than not have the tears and not have the heart. Amen. Don't ever lose the point, brothers and sisters, where your emotions doesn't affect the way you live. Amen. Don't ever lose the point that the emotion doesn't affect the way you teach or preach or testify because emotions are a part of life. And if you ever lose that, brothers and sisters, <coughs> you lose the ability to cry and you have lost the ability to be anything for God. I really believe that with all my heart. <clears throat> well, then there's tears of sympathy. Weep with those who weep. That's simple, isn't it? Somebody said you never loved anybody until you cried with them. Friends, that's what Christianity is all about. Walking our mile with our neighbor. Suffering when they suffer. Having empathy. Being able to identify with the pain that they're going through. Now you can't do that unless you've been through their pain. But once you go through their pain, brothers and sisters, God has a purpose for you going through that pain because I promise you, there will be those around you who are experiencing the same thing and it is your job to go and minister to them. You ever lost a child? You know why you lost that child? So those around you, when they lose children, that you can be that person to go and say, listen, I know exactly what you're going through. Now, I've never lost a child. I've lost a grandchild. I've never lost a son or a daughter. But once you experience that, you can have that identity and you can weep with those who have wept. And so, friends, everything that you go through in this life, every pain, every heartache that you go through gives you an opportunity to minister where nobody else can possibly minister. Then there are tears that are here that are always closer to God. Here's what the Peter said. Can it all joy when you fall into divers temptations? I'm sorry, Jesus said that. Rejoice in the Lord always. One day you will reap if you faint not. But brothers and sisters, before the happiness comes the tears. The tears have to be a part of our lives. 
Don't think there's joy until you shed the tears. But once the tears are there, then all of a sudden you will have the happiness. Everybody falls into temptation. Everybody goes through these things. And guess what? When we come out the other end, the tears brings happiness in our lives. And then lastly, the real meaning of the text. The Bible says here that the Lord will remove all their tears. What he's really saying is he will take away all of our griefs. All the grief that we have. All the outward griefs. You see, friend, one day, death will be no more. There will be no more trips to the funeral hall. There will be no more crosses to bear. There will be no more serving God day and night. No more broken friendships. No more ruined hearts. No more ruined homes. Everybody will love Jesus one day, but that day hasn't arrived yet. So today, brothers, we continue to live with the Lord. We continue to have true tears, and we continue to just go on and on and on and on. And we run the race that's set before us. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We run this marathon, and we continue knowing that, hey, Lord, I'm going to hurt. But when I hurt, I'm going to cry. But that's all right, Lord. Crying is part of my life. Crying is part of my ministry. And I know that one day it will be taken away, but not yet. Then all of our inward griefs will be gone. There will not be anybody, friends, who doubts God whatsoever. There will be no unbelief. There will be no evil in our hearts. No sin to easily beset us. No lust whatsoever. Everybody in heaven will believe in one saved, always saved. We'll always be there and we'll all be saved. How will it happen? It'll be God that does it. He says, I'll take the tears away. I'll remove them. It'll be a miracle. Okay? Now look at the loveliness of Jesus for just a minute. Look at how he cried. And when friends, if Jesus cried, we should cry too. And don't ever get to the place where you think, that your tears are a sign of weakness. They are not. They are signs of strength. Mm -hmm. But when we get to heaven, there's things that could make us cry. I mean, we're standing before Jesus, and we look at the face of Jesus, and all of a sudden, he says, come on in. He said, oh, Lord, no, wait a minute. There's stuff I need to do. He says, no, it's over. And maybe, friends, at that particular time, there will be tears. There will be tears of the things that we should have done that we didn't do. He said, Lord, I want to go back to earth for one more year. I want to be more faithful to the church. I want to give more money. I want to teach Sunday school. I want to do this. I want to share Christ with all my loved ones. And we'll cry at that particular point. So what happens? The miracle of God, will, that he'll take away those tears. He'll remove them from our eyes, and we will cry them no more. Amen. Friends, I'm looking forward to the day when the sorrow is gone our hearts and our lives. Until then, sorrow after sorrow after sorrow. Killings over here. Deaths over here. Cancer here. It just makes us cry and cry and cry some more. But one day, God will take the tears from our eyes. Now, contrast that, if you would, to the people in hell. Where the Bible specifically says there's weeping. There's weeping. There's weeping. And there's wailings and there's gnashing of teeth in hell. And you choose which you would like to be a part of today. Now we're all in the same world and we're all going to bear the same burdens. We're all going to shed the same tears. But old brothers, what a blessing it is to put our faith and trust in Christ and know that one day our pain and our tears will end. Well, think about going into a devil's hell and the suffering and the pain and the weeping will never ever end. Stand with me, please. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God, I pray this